The hot issue in European politics at the moment is who should be the next head of the European Commission, and specifically, should it be Jean-Claude Juncker, who is the proposed choice of the European People's Party, who emerged from the European parliamentary elections as the largest bloc in the European Parliament. They say this is all about democracy. Personally, I think that's a load of rubbish. But with me as a man who does buy that argument is my friend and sparring partner, Quentin Peel, who is... Uh, just left Berlin, where he was uh, the FT's Berlin bureau chief. Now, Quentin, tell me why you think this really is all about democracy. I believe that the European Union desperately needs more democracy, and it comes in two forms. National democracy through national parliaments, national governments, and European-level democracy through the European Parliament. And everything in Europe requires both to work together. The European to parli Parliament, in its wisdom, the main parties in the European Parliament, all decided to run candidates as their choice of candidate for the President of the European Commission. That's actually not what the rule book says. The rule book says the heads of government should propose but the Parliament must accept. Mm -hmm. Not only that, it says the heads of government must propose bearing in mind the outcome of the European elections. And I think, therefore, it is perfectly valid for the European Parliament to argue in favour of one of their candidates. I don't think it's a done deal to say that is going to end up as the outcome. You see, I would argue that the European Parliament is involved in essentially a power grab and has much less democratic legitimacy than it thinks. So that, for example, Jean-Claude Juncker, the guy who is meant to be the choice of Europe, well, I mean, clearly in Britain, I don't think anybody knew that they were voting for Juncker. But even in the heartlands of Europe, even in Germany, and he speaks German, he goes there, he's on television a lot there, there was a poll by Bill Tamsontuk which, which showed that only 7% of German voters even knew that Juncker was the proposed candidate of the EPP. So, if you compare that with a national election, in a national election, nobody's in any doubt that Merkel is the head of the CDU and that she'll end up as chancellor. But the trouble is, all these major groups ran with these candidates very publicly, very clearly as their choice. There was absolutely no question but that in the European elections in Germany, each of the major parties had one of these candidates running. So it was Martin Schulz. Even if nobody the noticed. They did notice. That was the whole point. You may say that very few knew precisely who Jean-Claude Juncker was. He appeared frequently in, in uh, the German television. He appeared on the newspapers. He was very well known. He didn't appear in Britain because his group is completely unrepresented in Britain because the Conservative Party left the group under David Cameron's insistence. And so they're not there. Yeah, but come on, nobody would have voted for him anyway. I mean, the idea that Jean-Claude Juncker would at any point have been a kind of powerful figure in the British political debate is a fantasy. The trouble is that it's very clear that in some countries of Europe it was, and that people feel very strongly about this. Angela Merkel is not a huge enthusiast for Jean-Claude Juncker, but having said that, she's absolutely clear that this was the top line of her party's campaign in the European yeah, election. But, but I still think it's a fantasy, because although Clearly, they wanted to promote this Spitzen candidate idea, lead candidates, in the hope that it would stir up a European political debate and that you could then legitimately say, OK, this is the guy Europe has elected. As you say, they had television debates. You know how many people watched the first television debate? 120,000 out of 500 million people in Europe. I would say, do you want more democracy in Europe or less? Because look at the process that has always been up to now pursued by the heads of government in choosing a president of the commission. Utterly undemocratic, utterly untransparent, and usually ending up with the lowest common denominator, whether it's a Jean-Claude, uh, whether it's a José Luis Barroso, or whether it's a, a, a Santerre when he became president, another case where a president uh, came through because the Brits blocked actually probably a better candidate. And it's, it's actually a very undemocratic process. I think it is a flawed process, but I think it's more democratic in the sense that the national leaders are above all, they're the dominant political figures, they're the people that people relate to, that people know. And so even if they're arguing in a kind of dark chamber and coming up with some sort of dirty deal rather than you know people raising their hands in the European Parliament and doing it in open, it is actually in the end more democratic because these are people with a genuine democratic mandate.
Europe needs more democracy, and it needs the national parliaments have never been very good at imposing democratic controls on their governments. They don't debate Brussels legislation seriously, they're not informed about it. The European Parliament is much better informed about it, and you and I know that there are some very impressive members of the European Parliament who do a lot of good work in actually making European legislation better. And that is, I think, why the European Parliament matters, why the European elections matter, and they shouldn't be dismissed as arrogantly as they are. Well, the European elections, I think, do matter, but I think it's a massive misinterpretation to say, and the conclusion we draw from the European elections is that Europe wants Jean-Claude Juncker as the president of the Commission. Arguably, the most significant thing that happened in the elections was a big surge in support for anti-European parties, for populist parties who will now be Biggest about... thing that happened in Britain and France, but not in Germany and nowhere in Eastern Europe. Well, yeah, Britain and France are actually the second and third largest economies in the European Union, so one can't dismiss them as, oh, well, that's just kind of eccentric. But, I, I mean, I think that for Europe to say 30% of the electorate are now voting for anti-European parties, therefore our reaction is going to be to invent a pretend democratic mandate for the most federalist person we can find and put him in charge of the European Commission is to court disaster. And I'm not going to allow you a last word, not because I'm being undemocratic, but simply because we've run out of time. But we can continue this Till argument next in time. future. Thanks very much.